Look at all that snow. It's cold in Canada, so if your heater core is plugged in your vehicle, your fan may blow well, but you're going to freeze your nuts off while you're driving, so I'm going to teach you how to unclog one, and this can be dangerous. Well, first thing you got to do is find your two heater hoses. These go to your heater core under the dash, which is just like a little radiator that's under your dash. Uh, some cars, it's very difficult to find them. The two tubes are way at the back of the firewall down there at the bottom behind the engine. So you've got to lay on your back to do this job. So to do this job, there's several steps like plan A, plan B, plan C. As you work your way up the steps, they get more dangerous. Hopefully it works on plan A. You're going to need just a simple thing for plan A. A piece of extra heater hose. You can even get this off an old dishwasher. You're going to need compressed air or a garden hose with good water supply. Now the first problem is going to be when you try to remove your heater hoses from your heater core. For some reason the rubber welds itself to the little brass nipples on the end, even to the aluminum ones. And it's really hard to get the rubber off without crushing and squishing your nipples and ruining your heater core. So you've got to do this very carefully. You just work at it a little bit when you get the clamps off and it won't come off. You try to get a little bit behind it gently with a screwdriver and pry on it and it won't come off. Best thing to do is just slit it off with a razor blade or a knife right close to where the metal is. Cut a slit this way and just peel it like you're peeling an orange. So what? You lose an inch of heater hose but you've saved a heater cord replacement job which is often very nasty. The other more safer way to do it is cut the hoses in a handy place. Could be anywhere under the hood that's easy to work on. Just slice them right in the middle, both hoses, and just get two repair nipples that join the ends back together with a couple clamps. So as you can see, I've got a little coupler in there that I've repaired this hose with and two clamps. It's really nice when you have a couple pieces of hose to work with, then you don't need this stuff. So, plan A. If you do have pieces added or if they're cut, you have to make sure both pieces are above the height of the heater core. It doesn't matter if you still have leftover antifreeze in there or not, but you do need liquid in to do this job. You can add water if all your antifreeze ran out. So when both hoses are pointing in a direction above the heater core, you put a funnel on one and pour water or antifreeze in it until the other one starts to flow out. Then stop and keep them held up. Next you've got to determine the direction the liquid flows through the heater core when it's normally operating in your vehicle. That's very important because when we blow this out to get the crap out of your heater core, you've got to blow it in the opposite direction. You may want to start your vehicle up for just a moment to see which hose sprays the fluid out the quickest, or before you take your vehicle apart and have your fan running on high and your engines warmed up and your heater's functioning as best as it's trying to, hold each pipe. The one that's the warmest is the input, so that means the fluid goes that way. Now when you're doing this job, formerly the input pipe is now going to be the output pipe when you blast all this crap out. So you've got to think of some way to block the creamy colored slime that's going to fly out of there from blowing all over under your hood because it really likes to stop ignition wires from working better than water and it's horrible to get on your body. So you can use cardboard, a piece of sheet metal, a piece of wood. Just make sure your formerly input like I said, is above the height of the heater core, held up by any way, even wiring and tying it up, and lay something across there to block everything. Next, if you've got compressed air, you're going to think about using one of these. Well, don't. They don't have a fast enough rate of flow because of the tiny orifice inside to be effective to get the crap out. So, next step is get your airline and put a needle nose vice grip on there and pinch it off. Then get a spare air chuck nipple or take it off your blower and connect it in there and no air will come out because it's pinched. Ah, leaking a little bit, the hose is so cold that it's uh, not pinched all the way, but you got the idea. Next is wrap electrical tape around those threads until it becomes the same size as the inside diameter of the hose you're working with. Now that this is the same size as the hole, shove it in the pipe which is the formerly output, now that's going to be your input. Put a hose clamp around the piece of rubber hose you added or that you left on. 
So now it's blocked so the contents aren't going to spray you in the face. This is connected there. Release your vice grip and hold on. It's going to go <laughs> Let it do that for about 30 seconds till it's done dripping and gurgling. Then just uh, remove it or reclamp it. Now just hook your hoses back up. Refill your engine with the correct mi mixture of antifreeze and the right amount. Warm your engine up and try it again. Not always this method works depending on how clogged your heater core is, but guaranteed it always works somewhat. Sometimes it works almost 100% first try. Sometimes it only works about 25% at the minimum for your first try. So go for a drive around the block with your heater fan on high, your engine fully warmed up and see what, how much difference it's made. Definitely it's going to have made a difference. Now if you don't have compressed air, I recommend going to your washing machine hookup, unhooking the hot hose. Don't bother using your pipe that's on the side of your house because that's cold water. Get your garden hose and screw your garden hose, right kitty, onto there. Run it out the closest window. Run the garden hose until the water coming out of the hose is hot. Put the vice grip on the garden hose just like I showed you with the air hose and then release it when the water's nice and hot and blast it that way. Look, you want some nip? Yeah, I bet you do. CoStar's gonna get paid too. Anybody else want some nip? Just contact me. Dave's Farm Pure Organic Catnip. Ready to sell. Plan B. Bleach. Now we're getting to the dangerous part where you might have to wear gloves and safety glasses. Now with this method, at first step is you want to get rid of any liquid that's in your heater core. So you can use your handy dandy compressed air to blow it out. Or you can put a longer hose on there and put your lips on there and blow out all the liquid you can with your mouth. Then set up your heater tubes in position like before where they're above the level of the heater core. Get a funnel again. Then get about a half a liter of your bleach put it in a plastic cup or a glass cup and put it in the microwave and heat it up till it's almost boiling. Then pour your liquid into your funnel until it starts to come out the other hose that's of course placed above the height of the heater core. Now let everything sit for a couple of hours while the caustic reaction kind of loosens up the crud in there. It actually doesn't eat your heater core at all so you don't have to worry. Then come back out and use your hot water or your compressed air and blast it out again. Sure, make sure you've got something to deflect the output because you don't want to get that stuff on you or your clothes. And have a garden hose or a pail of water ready to quickly rinse off everything under your hood. Now there's step, you know, C, the doomsday method I call it. The most dangerous. You better be old enough and well supervised if you do something like this. This is easy off oven cleaner. Yeah. With all the contents of your heater core blown out any way you can, you do your best to spray as much easy off in there as possible. And definitely wear rubber gloves and safety glasses because that stuff burns your skin pretty damn quick. Well, once you got as much easy off as you can get in there, wait again a few hours, then come out, and this time it works best with the hot water and the garden hose technique. Same thing. Clamp your garden hose. Don't use a nozzle on it and uh, hold it or tape it on to the end of that pipe. Release your vice grip and let it full force blast hot water through in the opposite direction the heater core normally flows. And let it run a long time, like say a couple minutes, maybe five minutes if you have to, to flush it out really good. Now I've never had a heater core blow up yet by doing any of these methods, nor have, have I had one leak from the caustic effects of oven cleaner, but who knows, it's possible. So now just refill your cooling system, whichever way works best, and go for a drive. I'm guaranteed you're going to have good heat now because this is the be-all end-all. It doesn't actually ever fail. Good luck and be careful.